And before we get, begin answering the questions from the public, and this is the moment we had mentioned before, we are going to invite questions from the floor. You can see right now a microphone is being set up. We have been encouraging people to send us uh, questions via email, Twitter. We are receiving those as we speak. I would like to invite the bosses back on stage in case you have, and I imagine you will, perhaps some questions for them. Okay. Okay. Let's start, actually, we've got, as I mentioned, we've got some questions that are coming in uh, via email. So, Anna Maria, we've got one from, for you. I'm trying to see where this one came from. This one? So, anyway, it is, what is the most fascinating interview, Anna Maria, you have done in the past six months? Oh, Malala Yosefzai. Oh, yeah. That's like, um... <laughs> you know, every once in a while you meet someone, I'm so lucky to meet so many people, um, but who just seems to be on another level. And um, I didn't know, I, I, we had heard about her, we'd actually put tape of her on the air before she was shot. And then, um, you know, before I read the book, I was like, I was wondering, okay, what's she like? Then I read the book, and um, it's a very, like, true to her voice book. It's uh, an amazing story. And, you know, she has a dad who's very much advocating for all of this education, and, and uh, you know, some call him a stage dad. But she also has a mind of her own, and after finishing talking to her, I really understood that. And when the cameras stopped rolling and we turned off the mics, I said to her, you know, Malala, I wonder if... You know, because she's a kid from the Swat Valley, remember? Like, this is very far away from the rest of the world. And I said, I wonder if, even if your father hadn't been such an advocate for education, even if you hadn't been so outspoken and this hadn't happened to you, that somewhere in your life you might have punched through and made a difference. And she looked at me, she's just a tiny little thing, and she looks at me and she goes, perhaps when I was older. <laughs> <laughs> an amazing young woman, just amazing. Uh, avant de continuer un peu plus loin, il faut quand même Before rappeler que pour transmettre further, toute question I just relative à ce que vous venez d'entendre, ce sont les intentions de Hubert, de Denis, de Suzanne, de Hubert, de Rémi, de Suzanne ou de nos personnalités de CBC Radio-Canada, juste fill in the section at the bottom of your screen. You can send us your questions by Twitter, hashtag RCAPA or hashtag CBCAPM in English, and we'll also take questions already submitted by video. We did want to invite people to ask questions, and I can see that that uh, people are already lining up. That's fantastic. We may not be able to answer all the questions. We'll do our best to do that with the time that we have. We will uh, answers to the most frequently asked questions will be posted on our corporate website later. You've got another email question. Uh, for Rebecca, alors voici la question. For Rebecca, here's a question. We see you on a number of platforms. You seem like the voice of, you, of the future. Is it by choice or did you ask for it? Is it realistic to think that all journalists can be as good on all platforms? Have I chosen to be the voice of the future, Rebecca? I said you were the um, multi-platform person. Mm. I said that you were the multi-platform mm. person. Mm. I, thank you for um, asking the question. I would say that it's just by accident. I, was, I do have a degree from Concordia in journalism. I wanted to do a TV or the written press. I wasn't interested in radio at all. I thought it was ridiculous. I thought it was boring. En fait, une sans and images, écoutez, I thought, how can you tell a story without young, right? any images? I was, I was just getting into university. And I was young and getting, and getting into university. I started working en fait. at the Gazette. In fact, uh, I'm more of a TV girl. And it just happened by accident. I started hosting Studio Ghost four years ago. It was an idea that came from management to do this multi-platform show on TV, next day on the web. And this show was written on the radio. So I found myself everywhere at the same time. I wanted to talk about generational challenge too. Pour moi, la radio, For me, le 75e anniversaire, on parle de nostalgie, euh, anniversary of radio, un petit peu plus tôt. Moi, je ne suis pas une nostalgique par But rapport I'm à la radio. Je suis nostalgique par rapport à la télé parce que j'ai l'âge que j'ai. Je suis nostalgique par rapport à la télé parce que j'ai l'âge que j'ai. Je suis nostalgique par rapport à la télé parce que j'ai l'âge que j'ai. Je suis nostalgique par rapport à la télé parce que j'ai l'âge que j'ai. Je suis nostalgique par rapport à la télé parce que j'ai l'âge que j'ai. Je suis nostalgique par rapport à la télé parce que j'ai l'âge que j'ai. Je suis nostalgique par rapport à la télé parce que j'ai l'âge que j'ai. Je suis nostalgique par rapport à la télé parce que j'ai l'âge que j'ai. Je suis nostalgique par rapport à la télé parce que j'ai l'âge que j'ai. Je suis nostalgique par rapport à la télé parce que j'ai l'âge que j'ai. Je suis nostalgique par rapport à la télé parce que j'ai l'âge que j'ai. Je suis nostalgique par rapport à la télé parce que j'ai l'âge que j'ai. Je
girls can multitask also. Maybe that's what it is. Girls I don't know. Multitask. Mais c'est, je trouve que so, maintenant, quand on yeah, est journaliste, when, when hey, you're girls, journalist, though, maintenant quand on est journaliste, reporter, on n'a pas le choix. En fait, you have il faut, no choice. Il faut s'assurer. You have to be euh, sure. Peut-être pas d'être expert, mais d'essayer de maîtriser le plus possible. Maybe not to be an expert in but you have to master as well as you can all these platforms. You have to be just as good on TV, radio, and the web. That's what I. That's what I want for all the other. Very impressive. Okay, and we also. I ask for your patience just for one more second. We do have uh, video questions that were submitted, and this is one that's uh, for Hubert, so I'd just like to throw to that video question now, please. How come you don't have uh, Hockey Night in Canada on cell phones available? I'd like to watch it on my smartphone. Yeah, how come? Yeah. <laughs> Mark, do this again. He uh, wants to uh, watch. Watch. He wants to watch uh, Hockey Night in Canada on his smartphone, his cell phone. Well, that's an easy one. Uh, we are actually uh, streaming live uh, Hockey in Canada on, um, on your computer, so you can watch us every Saturday evening. And if you go to your uh, provider, your cell phone provider, we actually do the same thing. I think there's a paywall, though, on depending on the provider, well, on all the providers, but we also do that on your cell phone. So we're happy in this first question, so it's an easy question, probably uh, just a softball. Uh, yeah, we do it right now. We do it. He asked for it, boom, you delivered it like that. That's how we roll around here, people. And on that, on that note, let's go to the floor as everybody takes a deep breath. Yes, sir. Broadening our conversations, CBC more than lives here. It literally saved my life one February morning when Pauline Dankin did her health report on Neurontin and Gaber Painton. My kids thank you, my wife thanks you, my community thanks you. Today I started, the, back then I started the Institute for Canadian Justice, the Fifth Estate has done two associated pieces, and we've revealed Canada's largest governmental privacy breach in the course of doing this. You folks are beacons. You create that national dialogue, that tapestry. You are the thread to that tapestry that binds us all, and thank you so much for that. My question is this, in an emergency, emerging technologies, platforms, and demographics, and the democratic discourse considered, it is critical that online presence, the two-way conversation, with the, is covered by the CBC Ombudsman. What good folks like I and others are finding is that when we do go online to comment, we are either being moderated to a degree that is unreasonable or others are getting ahead of the queue and spewing all kinds of nastiness. That two-way dialogue is very, very critical to all of us because in broadening those conversations, we have an amazing discourse. And if I may add uh, and end on this point, harness and enhance, as Matt said, this incredible discourse. More of these is a great way to start. And thank you, and please remember, my family thanks you so very much. Thank you. I think, if I may, that, uh, and it was very eloquent, thank you, that the heart of that, your question, though, was about the ombudsman, and, and you're talking about just trying to, that you are being over-moderated as you try to get points to, is that the, the heart of your question? A yes or no would be great, just in an, an, an interest of time. I'm not, I'm not trying to cut you off, thank you. So mo moderation is always a, a question, particularly on the web. We have policies that deal with that. We, um, we, we try to ensure that the nastiness or the foul words are not, uh, are not shown. We, we, we don't post those. Uh, it's always a question of balance. Uh, when a person, let's go to the ombudsman position or the ombudsman role, when the ombudsman, uh, when a person is not happy with the way we treat the story or what, as you know, you have a, the right to complain, the news department reacts to it. When you're still unhappy with the reaction or the answer of the news department, then you have uh, obviously a, a right to the ombudsman. The ombudsman is something, is a position that reports directly to me. We take great pride in the work of the ombudsman because they are the, uh, the conscience of the corporation. They also are a great way to show our transparency and our accountability. So yes, we understand moderation is always in the eye of the person that wanted the, the post and got his or her post deleted. We have policies for that. It's a constant conversation and they will evolve as we see these mediums change. 
Merci, Hubert. And in the spirit of moderation and just out of the respect for people here, let's try to keep questions as brief as we can um, so that we can try to broaden our platform here to get more questions from the floor. So, sir, over to you. Thank you very much. My name is Philip Savage, and I teach at McMaster University, where we have a new, I was going to say, CBC radio station. We don't have any radio. That's another matter that we can investigate some other time, I hope. I want to thank you for having such a meeting, uh, and for, as Matt has mentioned and Hubert has mentioned, being so transparent. Your competitor down the road, Bell Media, um, doesn't have such uh, events. In fact, it, rather than gathering questions, from its users, it seems to be gathering information against our will. So I hope at some point uh, Bell uh, will also address some of these questions. Uh, my question is about Radio 2 and advertising. Matt said, we do what we do because we're not just sending people to advertisers. He used to work on Radio 2 a little bit. He doesn't work on Radio 2 anymore. In the interest of transparency, the CRTC has asked the CBC, first of all, to limit its advertising on radio to beyond what it, or uh, well below what it had actually planned. It also suggested that within three years, you report on the impact on programming and the actual financials. In the interest of transparency, Monsieur Lacroix, and also our CFO sitting up here, would you be willing to have a public audited statement about the amount of revenue that is being generated through advertising on Radio 2, I won't speak to Espace Music, perhaps for Espace Music as well, that is made available at this public meeting in terms of the actual monies generated and also the cost of generating those revenues. Would you pledge to do that at the next annual public meeting? Thank you. Um, there's a lot in your question. Let me try to do this, uh, and if uh, Suzanne uh, thinks I've forgotten something, she can chime in. Uh, we actually told uh, the CRTC how many dollars we wanted. We wanted eight minutes of advertising. We're just about gradually getting to eight minutes. That would have given us about $20 million of contribution between 20 and uh, just a little more than 20. Uh, we got four minutes, so you can do the math. Uh, you can do the math. It's going to cost, it's going to generate about $10 million, let's say between seven or $10 million, a little less in the first year because we're late. In, uh, in starting it. It took us some time. We thought that the, uh, the uh, decision was going to come earlier. All that to say, we're looking at, or let's say, around $10 million on a cruising speed um, out of a $20 million target, four minutes an hour. Uh, okay. We've started the, uh, the ads on radio right now. Uh, and frankly, the, uh, the tolerance and the engagement and the comments from the uh, listening public has been, has been OK. And let me follow. Let say to Prime Minister Harper, you didn't answer the question. Will you provide on a yearly basis back to this public meeting an audited statement of the revenues you're generating through Radio 2 we advertising? Don't audit, uh, sir, we'd be happy to give you the numbers. We, we don't audit particular streams of revenues. We have a $1.7 billion uh, corporation. We have audited financial statements. We have quarterly MDNAs. I'd be happy to, if you come back and you ask the question every year, I'll give you where we are with respect to the plan. And we actually report that to the CRTC. So there's no, there's no, there's no hiding this number. It's, uh, I believe it's a contribution. You reported on a, on a, after three years, but will you be reporting it on a yearly basis to the public, including the, the cost of that? Of sure. It's, it, again, it's, there's, no, uh, there's, no, there's no hiding of this number. We asked Radio 2 and Espace Music to contribute to the challenges that we have on a financial level, and that's the, that's the plan. And and including another, the, including I'm, I'm the sorry, cost. sir, we've got, a, we've got a lot of questions. Just in fairness here, that, we've got a lot no, of questions. Okay. Another one that's coming uh, on this, and while we're on the topic, this is from John Berkham in Montreal to Hubert. Will you guarantee there will never be advertising on CBC Radio 1 and uh, Premier Chien? Did you guys ask the question, or did, <laughs> did it come actually from somebody in Montreal? Is it your brother or your sister or your friend? Um, yeah, it's John Burkham in, in, in air quotes, <laughs> yeah. also known the as Steve is, Patterson. We, we, told the CRTC there's, <laughs> we told the CRTC there's no uh, ads coming on Radio 1 uh, sur, notre, sur, notre, sur notre radio parlé. Pour exactement Talk radio. Les raisons que for exactly the reasons uh, que Jean that Jean-Sébastien mentioned earlier, the 
de notre radio parlée of our et, et, talk radio et content est, est différente. Il faut very que ce, ce, cette different. relation-là continue. Et euh, c'est pour ça qu'on a choisi de And faire ce radio musical. On a radio musical. On a aucune intention de faire no la publicité sur les ondes de ICI Radio-Canada en première ou radio 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 Steve, radio a question to you from Jason in Edmonton. Comedy can be a very visual art. So why do you think a show like The Debaters works just as well in front of a live audience as it does on the radio? Well, you bear's been to tapings. It's actually a little spicier in front of the live audience <laughs> than makes it to the radio. Um, but we keep as much as we can. But it's a great, it's a great event to come out to. That's what we've yeah. made it, is, is an event to come out to the taping of. And I don't, that probably didn't answer the question. It I'm didn't. Just practicing for being a politician. <laughs> um, it's a... Uh, I have to do the play-by-play, -play, so it's taught me a different muscle of actually having to sort of explain the visuals of comedy and add little nuances with words, and uh, it's actually made me a better uh, comic for it, so... Um, and sometimes you feel you have to cut people off? Sometimes Thanks, Steve, I do that's feel good. Oh, okay, Kelly! So. <laughs> Kelly! <laughs> let's, uh, let's go to this young lady on the floor. Just one sec. I want to say something about uh, the debaters. Yes, I've been to uh, a number of tapings, and it is true. The subject matters that are presented for debate actually come from what was in the paper last week. They give it a twist, but there's a true or false. There's a, does it make sense or not? And when they went to bishops, there was a very important conversation about French and about French in Canada and some of the challenges that were going there. And it was debated uh, in a very funny way, but the substance was extremely serious and well chosen. Thank you, Mr. President. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Please. Hi, um, my name's Katie. Um, I'm a fourth year RTA radio and television arts student at Ryerson, hoping to one day end up here. Um, my question for you is, um, as an advocate of getting people in my generation to listen to public radio, listen to the music that we play, um, just because everything here is so great, what do you guys plan on doing to um, attract a younger audience? Because sometimes it does seem like the senior network. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> Give it to Rebecca, she's young. <laughs> This is, this, is yeah, this, is, this is the face of it. I, I, je, je anglais. Do you want me to answer it? Maybe it's easier yeah. if I answer in English because you don't have your... Um, I was going to say it comes down to a lot of, a lot of the hosts are doing their, I guess, their own thing. I, I keep talking about Twitter and I guess by now you're really you're fed up of it. But to me, it really helped in, I think, you know how, we, how uh, artists, they go on the road and they say, I gained my public one person at a time. I went on the road and I played my songs all across the country. And I really have a feeling that that's what I'm doing. Every day, somebody on Twitter says, I didn't even know you were on the radio. I remember you from that TV show. Since when have you been on? Since uh, about a year and a half. Wow, this is cool. And it's, it's, you know, it's like one person will tell another person will tell another person will tell another person. I also think that the CBC has to understand that it, it, it will need to, um, uh, I guess, revitalize also their hosts. Because at some point, all the hosts that, that like, let's say, <laughs> how can I say, oh man, I'm threading on thin water. You understand what I'm saying? Let no, man, you're a People like you, you know, like one day are gonna be standing here, yeah, and at that. some point, we're gonna be, you know, yeah. dead. So, <laughs> that's well said, isn't it? That's that, it's, it's that classic French romanticism we've been doing. <laughs> I thought it was la mort, not la mort. No. Get it? It's <laughs> love and death. It's so funny. No, but yeah, it, 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 it's, also, yes. it's also your job You're to go right. and... There you go. Okay, Ooh. so, she passed it over to me. <laughs> let me, let me, uh, let me help you also with this conversation because... <laughs> are you happy that I did? Um, strategic planning. Uh, our chairman, in, in his uh, opening remarks, alluded to it. It's a very, very important part of what we're doing right now. We're in the middle of something called uh, Strategy 2015, which obviously, because of its name, lands in 2015. But at one point in time, we are not going to stop and then say, all right, what's next? We are deep into the beyond 2015 strategic direction of the CBC and Radio Canada. One of the things that we're looking at is obviously the 18 to 34 crowd, where I think that we have a blind spot. We need to better understand that uh, those listeners, what they do, their consumption habits, 
and we're working very hard at it. And so how, you're, and you're how to reach them. And obviously, and how to reach them. Um, we don't have the dollars to create the platforms, but we want to be on those platforms, so partnerships are very important in our lives. So the, the reach and trying to be relevant for you in the 18 to 34 range is much more than simply trying to figure out a particular program. It's about how can we create, and here we go again, this one-on-one -on -one relationship with you so that it might not start with a television program. It might not come from listening to one of the podcasts. It might actually be you um, finding out on YouTube of a podcast of a queue. Let's say you watch Gian on, uh, on, on YouTube, and then all of a sudden you said, hmm, that's interesting, and then you're going to find another way into the website, and then you're going to find something else about CBC Radio Canada. So this is our challenge. It's pretty much what I said. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> You know, Yvera, and you mentioned that there's something ubiquitous about Gian Gomeshi. He's on TV, he's on radio. It's almost like he's in this room almost. now. <laughs> Welcome, Gian. Okay, so we have, I hate to be the timekeeper, but that is part of my job here. We've got about four minutes left. Uh, we're going to try to squeeze in a few more questions. Why don't we, I, I know we've got some online, but sir, you're being patient, so let's take a question. My please. name is Clinton Green. Mine is a panel, my name, my, uh, mine is a statement, not a question. A short one, I hope. We're showing you the power of radio and freedom of listeners. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Amazing boys. I love that. That was easy. Great that was yeah. Radios, people can't see you when you blush. <laughs> Thank not, you, sir. Not it was very generous, and you've got great pipes too. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> you want to drop off a CV on your way out here? <laughs> This is radio. Okay, well, let's um, quickly we'll take one from uh, online here. Uh, Arzu Suleiman, this is who sent this, and it's for Matt, the birthday boy. What are the characteristics of a good radio host? The characteristics of a good radio host? Correct. Listening. Um, I have a piece of paper that's on my desk in front of uh, my microphone, and it says, stop talking. Um, <laughs> It's not always successful, but I think you have to listen, and you have to be curious, and you have to wonder if somebody is saying something, why they're saying something, and what the motivation is for them to come into a room and talk to a stranger like me to an audience of a, you know, a million people in a city. Why would they want to do that, and what is in it for them? And if you can listen, and if you can get at the core of what it is that they're saying, or if it's often with a politician, what they're not saying, um, it will transmit a lot. So for me, it's just listening. Oh, sorry, were you saying something? Thank you. <laughs> Sir. Yes, uh, my, name, my name is Saeed, and uh, Matt was saying people listen to his show to improve their English. I would say they are at very higher level of English because uh, there are lots of other people that I know which need much more help into getting uh, integrated and listening to CBC as the mainstream listenership does it. So my question is why we are not using the new technology to address that segment of listeners, why we don't have a, a special news bulletin which is using much limited vocabulary and giving more background on the stories, uh, why we are not talking about the Canadian culture history on shows that are specifically produced for the newcomers. We have uh, Radio Canada International, RCI, that completely revamped its, um, its presence. Uh, if you go to the website, for example, and you see that we broadcast um, in five different languages, and we changed it for exactly that reason. We used to invest dollars, and yes, it came uh, as a result of asking ourselves in the context of cuts whether Radio Canada International was still 
a relevant voice out there. It was, it was broadcasting to the world. We said, all right, let's now focus to, uh, and focus our attention on the people that are in Canada or wanting to come to Canada and they want to understand our country. So can I suggest that you go to Radio Canada International and I think that you will get a lot of what you are uh, referring to. Je voudrais oui. juste ajouter quelque chose. J'ai travaillé trois ans en Saskatchewan et j'ai été frappé Saskatchewan. par le What nombre d'anglophones ou d'allophones qui écoutaient la radio française who exactement to pour French ça, language radio, exactly not for that to, to learn English, but pour apprendre le français. To learn French, et là aussi, on se faisait English. dire aussi, we were told parler du, du background du Canada, de l'histoire, parler un peu plus lentement pour history, vous suivre, mais ils nous more expliquaient aussi qu'il faut, faut retenir aussi que la radio française, ce n'est pas la radio des francophones, c'est le service public de langue française de French language radio service. And we do that in Toronto too. Question question from Hubert. From Jean Sauvé in Windsor. How can you guarantee that the leaders of Radio Canada will protect the regions when you can clearly see the Montrealization of programs, the offering, the Montrealization? of uh, the radio. Uh, That's not true. I understand the perception that certain people de, might have of this danger. I, été assis, uh, I heard this. I was, bef I was uh, before the CRTC in November 2012, and many Canadians said they wanted to see more history Canada, throughout Canada uh, uh, on the radio, on our de, services. And the French services under on a un journal maintenant qui est à peu près radio uh, news programs seven days a week we have variety shows like un air de famille 20 families are there they're from throughout Canada so not only in the news but also in the variety shows you're seeing Canada and there's a the uh, news program with sitting at 10 p.m. we added two journalists one in Edmonton and one in Moncton two Add to uh, the news uh, the news program and to talk about Canadian uh, history. Even on Espace Music, we have hosts throughout the country. I was talking about Sudbury earlier on. There's some. There's one in Gatineau in Vancouver in Quebec City. We've taken Espace Music and we've made it. We've regionalized it so that you can hear Espace Music and hear the reality, the situation of various uh, communities. And Lord du Monde, that's exactly what we're trying to do on that program, too. And I just like to mention, yes, I am in Montreal. But I don't say it, because I don't see myself as a Montreal host when I'm on Mère du Monde. I, I'm there for the world. I have colleagues who give reports on Montreal, and I can say, well, he's talking about Montreal, but I don't say I'm in Montreal. When I'm in Edmonton, I'm an Edmonton host. When I'm in Quebec City, I'm a Quebec City host. In Chicoutimi House, when I'm in Chicoutimi. I understand the concerns of this gentleman. It's something that we've been criticized for, but and we have to be constantly on the watch and ensure that, uh, that time is ticking. Uh, to make sure the, uh, the message we're giving in my ear to is our coming. listeners. So, uh, which means the people who are running the show are telling me. We've got one last question, and I apologize to the two people there from the floor. Um, Please. Just a comment. My name is Amanda Martinez. I'm a singer here in Toronto. Grew up with CBC, and I uh, wanted to say thank you for all the support that you give artists whose music would not necessarily be on any other <laughs> station. I feel personally indebted for my career here, and I know that I wouldn't have that. And uh, on behalf of artists, I hope you continue to to promote the diverse music that we have in the city. Thank you so much. Well, that, uh, that's the mandate. When, when we talk about the mandate of, uh, of our musical radios, the, the Spass Music, the Radio 2, that's exactly what it's supposed to be. Uh, Ibera, I, I'm sure I'll let you handle this one. This is from Aran Devian in Brentwood Bay, BC. Uber, what progress is being made on the Hockey Night in Canada negotiations with Gary Bettman? Actually, that's one for Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, take that one. I'll take that one. Um, yes. <laughs> Uh, Hockey Night in Canada, uh, you heard Suzanne a few minutes ago, key to our brand, important. We think we connect Canadians together on Saturday nights. It's been 61 years. Uh, we've been negotiating with the NHL through the leadership of Neil McEnany and uh, Jeffrey Orridge. Um, conversations are ongoing. 
and we hope to hear in the near future of how they will conclude. On a le temps de prendre une question, celle-ci de Bernard de Montréal. Elle est destinée Bernard, à Jean-Sébastien. Jean Jean-Sébastien, uh, Jean vous avez Jean parlé des Sébastien. opportunités par rapport à l'engagement, participation dans les réseaux sociaux, et du public engaged dans vos activités de diffusion. J'aimerais vous entendre sur les risques, donc je comprends les risques associés à cette question. Et je veux aussi entendre sur les risques. Je comprends qu'il y a des risques associés à la social media. Il y a des collègues qui ont dû faire amende honorable après s'être exprimés sur les réseaux sociaux. Il y a des risques associés à la social media. Il y a des risques associés à la social media peut-être que les médias sociaux, ben, c'est un micro, c'est une caméra, c'est une tribune publique, c'est un micro, c'est une tribune publique, je pense que je suis persuadé que Hubert serait d'accord, que tous les collègues seraient d'accord, et je pense que Hubert serait 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 d'accord, et je pense que Hubert He has micro. to, or she Nous has to, behave as if they were in front of the camera. We're not there to defend an editorial point of view or our personal point of view when we have one. I just wanted to uh, mention something. People say, how do you hide your opinion? A host quite often is, uh, sees that life is in tones of gray. Often we don't have an opinion because we hear so many versions of the same story and so many different points of view, and we're open to all of it. So we forget sometimes that we have to make our own opinion. Aussi, the sur, risk I also see... Uh, bon, on peut se faire entraîner well, you can be led on ça uh, tweet fight. into, uh, into tweet non, fights. Or, you can be... There's a risk résister to get involved in a, in a fight. And uh, we have to be careful about that too. But I'd like to end by saying that I'm not totally comfortable yet, I admit, with the idea of allowing people to comment on the news constantly, because sometimes I, we, we try to moderate things, but, but you know, sometimes it goes off track. So I'm wondering if we need to go that far. Yes, blogs are necessary. It's good to start a conversation, but there are risks. Les situations possibles. I can't talk about all the possible situations, but we have to be very careful. There was now somebody was talking about the ombudsman and commentary on Twitter. You can speak directly to the host. This is great because the conversation is very personal. But when you're insulted, for instance, or when you get into a tweet fight, then I just got a very important tweet. Hashtag we're done. Like to thank you all for your participation here.